Hello everybody, what is up? It is Cyborg Elf here with another video. And I have a cool little video kind of scratching the surface of buffer overflows. It's going to be pretty cool. We can maybe even expand on this. And if you don't know what a buffer overflow is, do not worry. It's okay. I'll explain it right now and you'll probably get a better understanding through the examples. But a buffer you can think of as a variable, a type of storage. And that buffer can store X amount of data. So it stores a certain amount of the data. But the buffer can be overflowed and that happens when you give it too much data. So you can think of this little bucket as the buffer and the water is the data. You give it too much data and it starts kind of affecting other parts of the code because it's not contained within that variable anymore. And this is something reverse engineers can do uh, to exploit things in programming that don't properly make sure that user inputs like passwords are uh, controlled. We'll see more about this through example. I have two set up for us examples. This first one, I want to go over uh, the stack in the heap, as well as we'll show a little example of overflowing this buffer. This first one is going to be stored on the stack, and variables on the stack get their memory allocated on the stack when they are called. So the compiler uh, will handle this memory allocation on the stack. And then a heap. So Right here we have a little example, and it needs to have its memory allocated and deallocated by program code. So if I call this, I also need to deallocate the memory space that I called for. it. And the heap is where you do this allocation and deallocation. And if it's not handled well, if the programmer doesn't deallocate memory, um, as they should, you always want to do that, it will lead to memory leaks, and that is not good. So we won't really need this line right here, I'll comment it out. Let's run this and see what happens because you see this buffer has a value of 10 in it. But this string right here is definitely over 10 characters. So what's going to happen? Well, let's find out. We get an error. The project doesn't even build in Visual Studios. And we can look down here to see why. This stir copy function, it's telling us it's unsafe and our compiler won't let us build it because it caught this simple error. We can disable the warning, the deprecation. So let's actually do this so we can test for testing reasons. A lot of these modern compilers are able to uh, detect this type of silly mistakes made by programmers. So we need to turn off this warning where it tries to prevent us from making this mistake. So go to the properties by right clicking properties, preprocessor in the, under the C slash C++ tab. And let's just add this right here, the underscore CRT underscore secure underscore no warnings. So we'll do this and now it will let us actually run it. And almost instantly the program ran and it crashed and it throws us a little error right here, a runtime error. And it says the stack around the variable buff, which is the one that's being uh, overflowed, was corrupted. So we can see that the string couldn't fit inside of the buffer and it overflowed into other parts of the memory and that did crash the program and you might be wondering why does it matter if it crashes the program well you can do shellcode injection and all sorts of things we can go over this in a later video to actually gain access to parts of the code and uh, influence the program in ways that you shouldn't be able to okay so we'll close that out now let's take a look at our next example right here I have already turned off the little warning so we're allowed to do non-safe programming practices but again we have a buffer on the stack and it asks to enter a password. So our password is going to be password12 and it does a, a stir compare right here where it compares what the user enters to this. So let's run a quick little test. We can see the value of the buffer is uh, the array value 15. So let's just type 1, it, it won't crash, it'll just tell us incorrect password. Even if we enter the password, it won't crash. But if we enter more characters than that buffer can handle, like I do a bunch of H's, right here, runtime, if there's a little runtime error, so the stack around the variable buff was corrupted because it couldn't handle that much data. So this is how things, uh, like this is a user input. So keep in mind that 
when you're programming something, you always want to keep in mind that the users, things that the users can input, like in, inputting passwords, usernames, things like that, uh, you need to make sure they're secure because that's ways that the pro the the user can actually uh, influence the code, if that makes sense. So this is just something that you want to keep in mind to make sure it's secure. Now let's actually open Ollie Debug, and I will have the link for everything in the description. I'll have the link for some things that you can use as a documentation, all of some like extra learning resources you can look at. But let's open Ollie Debug so we can debug this. And it is a free application, unlike IDA or IDA Pro. So I'm going to build this. And let's head over to Okay, so we have this now. Let's open our debugging program and let's just take a look at the corruption live. So copy this and we will go to file open and through this we will open our application. And we just get this. Um, that's nothing we need to worry about right now. And if you're not familiar with ID, uh, excuse me, Ollie Debug, just follow along. We'll first off, we'll run the program. Okay. And now let's take a look at the registers because this is where the buffer is going to appear on the stack. It'll pop to one of these registers. I don't know if pop was the right term, but it'll show up on one of those. So first, we'll type ff, and nothing happens. The program runs through completely, and it returns. So let's actually click this button to restart the program so we can launch it again. And this time we're going to enter more than the buffer can handle. So we'll start to click that again. And let's just enter a bunch of Ds. Now you're going to see this happen. On uh, the EBX register, we get in Unicode, it tells us because stack around the variable buff was corrupted. So yeah, I hope this helped you understand what a buffer overflow was. I definitely want to, in later videos, go over uh, different things you can do after you overflow a buffer, a shellcode, injection, and there's a lot of cool stuff. And I don't say this in a lot of my videos. I don't really remember the last time I asked one of you to subscribe or anything like that. Uh, but I do a lot of these videos just for fun, and it would still mean a lot if you drop some support on the video and maybe even subscribed if you like this type of content. Anyways, peace out.